title for the today's video is FPD versus RPD that is fixed partial denture and the removable partial denture. Sometimes condition arises that a patient falls in a dilemma over not being able to decide between a fixed and removable denture processes. Then the patient comes to us and we are the ones who have to guide him about the best possible treatment. A good dentist would always carefully assess the situation and the condition of the remaining natural teeth along with the other systemic and emotional factors which are experienced by the patient. We will today study about various situations and factors which will help all of us in deciding one option over the other. So what are the indications for removable partial dentures? The following statement should be considered before planning any treatment for a patient. Muller Devan in 1952 stated that the preservation of that which remains is of utmost importance and not the meticulous replacement of that which has been lost. The first factor which we take into consideration is the length of the edentula span. In longer edentulous arches, removable partial dentures are preferred and FPD is not advisable. Why? We will study this with an example. In this case, removable denture processes was preferred because the denture base it aids to evenly distribute the occlusal forces along the edentulous portions of the ridge. Fixed partial dentures are avoided in cases with long span edentulous arches. Let us understand this with an example. The patient comes with missing mandibular 4, 5 and 6 with canine and the second molar remaining as support. The dentist prepares the case for FPD. He does the crown cutting and does all the procedures so as to replace the two premolars and a molar. The patient leaves the clinic satisfactorily. After some days of normal function, patient comes back with a fractured prosthesis. The prosthesis was not able to provide good function to the patient as there was excessive load on the abutment teeth. So how do we prevent this situation? And these law, yes, this is the solution. This helps to determine whether a fixed processes can be used or not. So what this law actually says, the perisemental surface area of the abutment teeth to be used for a fixed partial denture must be equal to or exceed the perisemental surface area of the teeth being replaced. Don't worry, this becomes a lot more easier with an example. We will study two cases, case 1 and case 2. Case 1, only a single molar is missing. And according to Entes law, we will consider the perisemental area of the premolar and the second molar. What is a perisemental area? Area covering the cementum covered root of the teeth is the perisemental area. Now we have to label all these teeth with numbers. These numbers depict perisemental surface area of each individual tooth. According to Entee's law, the combined perisemental surface area of 3 and 5 should be equal to or greater than that of 4. Now dealing with the second case, if both 4 and 5 are missing, the combined perisemental surface area of 3 and 6 should be equal to the combined perisemental surface area of 4 and 5. If not, 
the processes will fail. For such cases, the NT's law can be fulfilled by taking additional support for 2, so that 2 plus 3 plus 6 equals to 4 plus 5. This is all about the first factor. Now we will consider the second factor, age of the patient. In patients under the age of 17 years, a fixed partial denture is contraindicated because they have large dental pulps and also lack sufficient clinical crown height. We need sufficient clinical crown height as in a fixed processes the abutment teeth are reduced so that the processes can be fabricated like a cap over the abutment to obtain support. In old age, the reduced life expectancy and frequently failing health contraindicate the use of expensive fixed partial dentures. Now dealing with the third factor, the abutment tooth. Position of the abutment tooth plays a major role. We have to remember that FPD can only be used when there is a posterior tooth for support. If such is the case, FPD can be used. But if a case comes to us where there are no posterior teeth present, so there is no posterior teeth to act as an abutment, in this case RPD is preferred. We have to remember, when there is no tooth posterior to the edentula space to act as an abutment, a RPD is preferred. Just there is an exception to this case which is cantilever fixed partial denture. What is a cantilever FPD? A case presents as posterior teeth missing under some unfavorable conditions. The dentist prepares the tooth for FPD. There was no posterior tooth to support, so this is called as a cantilever bridge. When an FPD is prepared, projecting posteriorly like a cantilever from the abutment, these things are avoided nowadays. The fourth factor is the periodontal support of the remaining teeth. The periodontal membrane is the structure which transfers all the load from the teeth to the underlying bone. A sound tooth having good periodontal support will distribute the forces acting on it to the supporting alveolar bone. But a periodontal weak tooth, this will not transmit the forces to the alveolar bone successfully. So, there will be increased chances of failure of the treatment with FPD. But if we use an RPD, the RPD it requires less support from the abutment teeth and also the RPD it acts as splints to support the remaining teeth. So the RPD it will concentrate its load to the tissue relieving the abutment from an excessive stress. The fifth factor is cross arch stabilization. When the remaining teeth have to be stabilized against lateral and anterior posterior forces, a removable partial denture is indicated. The major connectors in RPD will help to provide this stabilization. Whereas, a FPD will only provide anterior-posterior stabilization. The next factor or the sixth factor is excessive bone loss. When there is trauma or excessive residual ridge resorption, it is difficult to place the artificial teeth of an FPD in an ideal buccolingual position. But in a removable partial denture, the artificial tooth can be positioned as per the operator's preference and the denture base can be fabricated to provide the required support and aesthetics. The denture base also provides good lip and cheek support such that 
it re-establishes the normal facial contours. Next factor is aesthetics. The RPD provides better aesthetics because the denture base gives the appearance of natural tooth arising from the gingiva. Also, the resin base extending between the artificial teeth helps to block out dead spaces occurring near the gingival embrasures, which is a common problem in FPD. The eighth factor is the emotional problems. In cases with physical and emotional problems, expensive and tedious dental procedures required for the fabrication of FPD are best avoided. The appointment for a removable partial denture is shorter and less demanding to the patient. The next factor is immediate teeth replacement after extraction. This is not successful in the case of a fixed partial denture because further ridge resorption will occur and produce an unesthetic appearance. In case of removable partial denture, relining can be done as resorption occurs. So, dentures versus bridges. This was the video. When deciding between partial dentures and bridges, Consider how each will work with your remaining teeth. Both fill spaces prevent teeth from shifting and improve your ability to chew and talk. But depending upon the structure of your teeth, both function differently and require unique upkeep which will affect your ultimate decision. Thank you.